All right, learning target four is solve quadratics using factoring. Okay, this is going to be probably the newest piece of information you learn in um, algebra. Okay, so first we need some some vocab words. First one is expanded form. Expanded form is when a term is or a polynomial is written without parentheses and all terms are combined. So this would be if we had something like 2x squared. No, let's not do 2x squared. Let's just do x squared minus 9x plus minus 10. Okay, x squared minus 9x minus 10. Factored form is written as the product of two or more expressions. So this ex same expression would be written in factored form as x minus 10 times x plus 1. Okay, because if you remember, if we brought, draw those boxes, if I had x minus 10 and x plus 1, then my little boxes would give me x squared here, and then negative 10x and 1x, which would combine to give me this negative 9x, and negative 10, which gives me there. Okay, so these two are equivalent. This is written in expanded form, and this is written in factored form because it's a factor of two, or it has two different factors. Okay, two binomials written to um, multiply together. The zero product property tells us if the product of two or more factors equals zero, then one of those factors has to equal zero. So write down if a times b equals zero, then either a or b equals zero. And that makes sense, right? Because if one of them's gonna or if they're going to equal zero, only zero times something can equal zero. So one of them has to be zero. So here, if we were going to set this equal to zero, we would know that what makes this zero is positive 10. 10 minus 10 will make that zero. Or what makes this zero is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 equals zero. So either this has to be, either x has to be positive 10 or negative 1. All right, and that's what we're going to try to find is the two things that make the equation equal to zero. <coughs> so here, and I'm just going to, just for the sake of getting used to this, I'm going to write this in our box over here. x minus 9 and 3x plus 4. Our little boxes would have 3x squared, and then we'd have... Um, 4x and then we'd have negative 3 times 9 gives us negative 27x and then negative 3 times 4 gives us or negative 9 times 4 excuse me gives us negative 36 okay so um, that would be our little box for it but what we're trying to do is find out what makes each of these things zero because we want the equation to equal zero which means Either this is going to equal zero, or this is going to equal zero, okay? Now, if, if we want this to equal zero, if we want x, plus, or x minus 9 to equal zero, then all we have to do is add 9 to both sides, and x would equal 9. So one of the roots is x equals 9. The other one is when 3x plus 4 equals zero. And then we'd get a minus 4 from both sides. So we'd have 3x equals negative 4 divided by 3 divided by 3. And x is going to equal negative 4 thirds. And we can leave it as a fraction or you could put it as a decimal. So our two roots are 9 and negative 4 thirds. Okay. Here we're going to have three roots. We're going to have... What makes this zero? Well, four times what equals zero? Divide by four, x is just gonna equal zero, right? What makes this zero? Well, x plus six equals zero. If we minus x six from both sides, then 
x equals negative 6. That's going to make it equal 0. And then what makes this 0? Let me use pink. 4x minus 9 to equal 0. Well, we'd add 9 to both sides, and we'd have 4x equals 9 divided by 4, and x equals 9 fourths. Okay, so we have three roots there. The difference in how these two things would be graphed is this would be a parabola that has a root of negative 4 thirds and 9. And you don't have to know about this yet. This is going to be a different kind of equation that has a root of 9 fourths would be like right here, negative 6 right here, and 0. So this is going to look like this, something like that. Okay, but this, the graphs don't mean a whole lot right now. We're just concerned with you being able to find those roots. All right, moving on here. If we are finding the roots here, that means y, all the y's are going to be equal to 0. Okay, and so if we have x squared minus 2x, now I can't solve using square roots because if I try to take x squared and add 2x to both sides, then I have 2x, and I can't square root both of these things and still get x alone. Okay, it's not possible for me to get x alone. So we're going to use what's called factoring. Okay, now in factoring, you know about the little boxes. Okay, we're gonna, the boxes are gonna come in handy. But really what you need to think about is in factoring, what can I take out of two things? When I have just binomials, what can I take out of both of them? Well, I could take out an x out of both of these. So if I had x out of both of those, then what's left of x squared? Just another x. And what's left of negative 2x? Just negative 2. So if I factor by just pulling out an x from both things, then what makes this 0 is just x equals 0. And what makes this 0 is just x equals 2. So my two roots would be x equals 0 and x equals 2. Here, if this is 0, then I would have 2x squared, and I'm going to minus 5 from both sides, minus 5x equals 0. And again, I have a binomial here. So when I have a binomial, I have to think about things I can pull out. I can't pull out 2 because 2 doesn't go in evenly to 5, but I can still pull out that x. So x times 2x minus 5 would work, right? Because I just pulled out an x from both of those. So again, one root is going to be x equals 0. And then the other root would be when 2x minus 5 equals 0. So 2x equals 5. So x would equal 5 halves. So here are my two roots there. Those, that's for when you have just binomials, okay? Two terms. If we have three terms, what ends up happening here is if we look at those boxes that we always do, what ends up happening is that this number is always that last number. x squared is always in this box. And then these two boxes always add to this number. Okay? If you've caught on to the boxes that I've been using, that's the ter that's the pattern. So we need two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to 10. Well, 5x plus 5x would add to 10x and 5 times 5 would multiply to 25. So if those are both positive, x plus 5 and x plus 5. So that would mean x plus 5 times x plus 5 would equal 0. Now, is 5 what makes this equation 0? No, what makes this equation 0 is negative 5. And what makes this part 0 is negative 5. So here's an instance where we have just one root. And we have just one root because we could also write this as x plus 5 squared equals 0. This is going to be a parabola that actually sits on the x-axis. So its vertex or its turning point is on the x-axis at negative 5. Okay? 
So let's try this one. If we make our boxes, we're going to need a negative 42 here and an x squared here and we need two numbers that add to 11 and multiply to 42. Well the easiest way to do this is to think about what two things multiply to 42. So negative 42 could come from 2 and 21 well, negative 2 and positive 21, or negative 21 and positive 2, could come from negative 3 and 14, or 14, negative 14, positive 3, could come from 6 and negative 7, or negative 6 and 7, or negative 7 and 6, okay? So then we need a combination of those two that add to 11. Well, positive 11. So this one, x or negative 3 and positive 14 add to 11. So that would be a negative 3x here and a positive 14x here. So that would mean it would be x plus 14 and x minus, minus 3. So my equation would be x minus 3 times x plus 14 equals 0. Now we have to figure out what two things make the, these factors zero. Well, what makes this zero is x equals positive 3, and what makes this zero is x equals negative 14. All right, let's try these two. So if y equals zero, then all we have to do is find that. And we need to, again, find our boxes where we have a positive 42 here and an x squared here. And we already know the factors of 42 are 21 and 2, which don't add to 13, and 3 and 14, which don't add to 14, and 6 and 7, which do add to, six, to 13. But it needs to be a negative 13, so a negative 6 times a negative 7 would make a positive, would multiply to a positive 42 and add to a negative. So our, our factored form is going to look like x minus 6 and x minus 7. So here we have x minus 6 times x minus 7. And what two things make those 0? Well, this x equals positive 6 would make that 0, and x equals positive 7 would make that 0. So our roots are 6 and 7. Here, we need 10 plus 0 to equal x squared minus 3x. So I'm going to minus 10 from both sides, and we have 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. So again, if I think about my boxes, I need a negative 10 here and an x squared here, and I need these two things to add to negative 3. So if I'm thinking about 10, I got 5 and 2 and 10 and 1, really. That's it, right? So 10 and 1 aren't going to add to 3, but 5 and 2, if I make the 5 negative, negative 5 plus 2 is going to equal negative 3. So I'm going to have negative 5x and 2x, so that means I'm going to have x minus 5 and x plus 2. So my factored form would be x minus 5 times x plus 2. And it doesn't matter which way you write those. It could be x plus 2 min times x minus 5. But what the roots are still going to be is x is positive 5, we'll make that 0. And x being negative 2, we'll make that 0. So my two answers are there and there. Notice I'm almost always having two answers, except for this one, and that's where that vertex sits on the x-axis. Okay? So before class, try factoring this one by pulling something out and factoring this one. Here, I'll help you out. This is going to be plus 5x plus 6. Try to find the factors of 6 that add to 5. Okay? If you want to work on con, these are the topics to work on.